On today's Enrique's Home Buying Channel, we're going to answer the following question. I cannot get my offer accepted. Should I keep trying? Hey, welcome back. Enrique here with First West Financial. And the question is simple. Should you continue to try to try to get a home if you continue to get your offers rejected? Are you tired of doing that? So we're going to talk about that briefly. You know what? I can tell you that the market is different right now. We know that many of you are qualified. Many of you are well qualified. Maybe you have a decent down payment and you have been trying to get an offer accepted over and over again. Maybe if you have made three, four, five different offers and you are getting a little tired. Maybe you are experiencing fatigue from making offers and you're wondering, should I really keep trying? You know what? I'm going to give you my advice. My answer to that is yes. You should continue to try to, to see if you can get an offer accepted because I'm going to tell you something. It's a numbers game. There's some luck involved, but then there's also some skill when it comes to how do you get the offer accepted. Now, let's unpack that a little bit. The first thing I want to tell you is don't give up. There is an opportunity. I have seen people who have made 9, 10, 11, 12 offers in different houses, and then boom, just when they're about to give up, they get their offer accepted on a house, and now they're homeowners. So don't quit before it happens for you. However, there are some things that you want to be careful with that make sure that your realtor and yourself have put together in order to make your offer successful. So first of all, you got to know that you're not going to be able to win a lot of deals if you're competing with cash offers. If someone's offering cash, full price or above asking, there's, there's not much you can do with your offer, right? Someone's going to take cash over finance in most cases. So that's, that's that. But on the other hand, you are maybe competing with other offers and you're wondering, does contingency removal make a difference? Uh, you probably heard about that. Does it make a difference what kind of lender I'm using? Does it make a difference what kind of financing? Well, a lot of those things do matter. The first thing you want to make sure is that you're working with the right agent and that your agent specializes in working with buyers. If you feel that maybe your agent is a little tired, Maybe he's not giving you attention. Maybe he stopped calling you because you made so many offers and nothing gets accepted. Have a conversation with that agent and say, hey, I, you're still game to take me to the finish line. Do you still have the stamina to take me all the way and find me a home? A lot of agents will tell you, hey, you know what? I'm too busy or I got too much going on. Maybe it's time for you to try someone else. I've seen that happen. But have an honest conversation with that agent. Number two, Make sure that your offer, that your pre-qualification is uh, on track. If you got qualified three, four, five, six weeks ago, a month ago, two months ago, maybe it's time for you to try to get requalified because interest rates have changed, things change, and maybe your uh, approval is not as fresh as it should be. Number three, make sure that you're working with a local lender. Let me tell you, what I mean local is if you're in Southern California, Use the Southern California lender whenever possible. I have seen us uh, win offers with some of our clients because we were competing with offers from, you know, a lender that was in a different state, like in Texas. Maybe they're using one of those big banks like Quicken or Lending Tree. Well, the seller would prefer to do business with someone that is available locally that can answer the calls. And I'm not putting other state lenders down. I'm just giving you an edge. Every little edge is going to make a big difference. I would expect that if I'm making an offer on a house in North Carolina and I'm here in California and I'm providing an approval, and if I compete with a North Carolina broker, he's probably going to win. You know, they're local. They know each other over there. So that's why that's important. And then, of course, making sure that you're looking at your numbers correctly. If you have to increase your uh, offer for, you know, 5000 3000 X amount of money, Run the numbers. How much is that going to make a difference in your payment? Is that going to make a big deal difference in your payment? The other day, someone lost the house because they didn't want to counter back. The seller wanted an additional $5,000. And when we did the math, I said, hey, it's only going to cost you an extra $60. And by then it was too late because it took him too long to respond. So make sure you're staying on top of that, right? If you are going to lose a house over 60 bucks, then you got to rethink that process. So keep trying, stay focused, pay attention to some of the things that I just shared with you, work with a local mortgage broker, fine tune your realtor, make sure that he's still or she's still game to take you to the finish line and make sure that you are pre-qualified properly 
in order for you to stay competitive in this market. That's my advice. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos. We do a ton of stuff that is real estate related. Have a great week. Talk to you soon.